Okay, Turtle Boy. Is Turtle Boy in the house? There he is. I've never met Turtle Boy. So this is an actual honor and a privilege. Turtle Boy. This guy. This guy is a warrior with his laptop. He's a warrior with his keyboard. On a shoestring budget, this guy, TurtleBoySports.com, keeps outscooping and outscooping the phony, fake news establishment media in this state. And this guy right beside me, okay, you want to talk about, you know, forgive me, there are kids in the audience. As the Spanish would say, a pair of cojones. You want to talk about a pair on this guy. He was one of the first to have broken the story about the heroin cocaine possession of that driver that killed the Fallen Seven, about a rap sheet as long as my arm, about the criminal neglect and abuse that took place at the RMV. The media was afraid to touch that story. This guy had the balls to break it. So let me introduce to you the founder, I guess what, the president? The president, the top dog, the head honcho of Turtle Boy Sports, Turtle Boy. Thanks, Jeff, and uh, thanks for having me. My real name's Aiden, by the way. You can call me Aiden. It's kind of weird. I meet people on the streets, they call me Turtle Boy, but I'd just like to take a moment to point out, looking around up here, I figured the cameras were somewhere. I think I see one person that seems to be from me, one, okay? If there were 10 jack wagons walking around in MAGA hats right now, yelling white power, okay? There would be every media outlet in the country down here acting like that is representative of conservatives as a whole. That's not what it is. This is representatives of conservatives as a whole. And I don't see any media down here. They have no interest whatsoever in covering this rally because it's peaceful, organized, and respectful. And that is not the narrative that they are trying to push about you people. They're trying to point out that you are racist and evil and you're not. You just want the laws to be followed and they're clearly not being followed right now, are they? So when I first heard about this uh, tragedy in New Hampshire, obviously my heart sunk for the families of the deceased. When I first found out that it was a 23-year-old uh, Russian uh, who was responsible, I will admit, I initially felt sorrow for him. However, that is only because I assumed that a normal human being, a young 23-year-old with a new job, the amount of pain and guilt that they would carry for the rest of their life would be more punishment than I can bear. I can tell you right now, I don't fear, my number one fear isn't death. It's accidentally causing someone else's death and having to live with that, but that's because I'm a normal person, okay? However, the next day, we got a message of a picture of him on Snapchat with his sister the day after he killed seven people. He didn't look sorry. He didn't look sorry at his arraignment. And that is when I knew that we are not dealing with a normal human being here. However, he could not have done this on his own. Our system exists and our RMV and all of our other regulatory agencies exist to prevent tragedies like this from happening. It was a group effort. Had just one person in the chain done their due diligence and done their job, they would be here with us today. But they didn't. It starts with the company that hired him and the nepotism involved in that, considering he literally was fired weeks earlier for flipping a truck over in Texas. Months before that, we've seen the video of him in Texas, high out of his mind. He can't even stand in place. He was uh, arrested, but yet he kept his job. And somehow he was able to uh, flip over the truck and still get another job driving trucks because apparently 
Clearly, there is no oversight in this industry whatsoever. However, the bigger crooks here are the people in the RMV and the governor who protects them. This is a pattern at this point. They threw you people a bone because they thought you were gullible and stupid when they fired or they had one person resign, likely with a nice golden parachute so they can be a hack the rest of their lives in some other government agency. They thought that that would appease you, but it doesn't and it shouldn't, okay? The real problem here is Stephanie Pollock and the governor who protects her. This, this is a pattern with Governor Baker, a pattern of protecting his people. We saw it when two years ago we broke the story that a judge in Dudley had a daughter pulled over by the state police in Holden, the town where I live, and she had she offered the uh, trooper inappropriate things that I cannot mention here because there are children. Yes, Elowinski will call. And next thing you know, the district attorney and others were calling for this to be scrubbed from her arrest report. We broke that story, and it led to one of the biggest scandals in recent history. The floodgates began opening. We found out more and more and more. Who, who lost their job because of that? Who, Richard McCune, once again, golden parachute. He didn't lose his pension because of that. Four hacks, high-paying hacks, who haven't been real cops in years, okay? Who, I'll tell you one thing right now. I respect the Massachusetts State Police immensely. They are the ones that came to us with these stories, but it's their bosses, okay, that are doing this, and that's why they came to us. And nobody lost their job, and the first thing that Charlie Baker did, before even doing an investigation, is covering up for Dan Bennett. He said, Dan Bennett, my safety guy, he did nothing wrong. How do you know? You haven't done an investigation yet. How do you know? Because Charlie's people can do no wrong. And that's what Stephanie Pollock is. She's Charlie's people. He only reacts immediately when it's politically convenient to do so. He, he, how long did it take him to come out and throw Judge Kavanaugh under the bus? How long did that take? About five seconds, right? How long did it take for him when he heard that there was a free speech rally going on right over here two years ago? Did it take for him to come out and condemn literally the First Amendment? That didn't take him very long at all. But he's silent and it takes a lot of prodding for him to come out. And where was he when we found out that the RMV had 53 bins from other states sitting in an office in Quincy giving them information about licensed drivers in this state who have no business driving because they're a threat to every person here. Where was Charlie? Oh, he was in London. He was in London. London for a windmill conference. He was learning about windmills because that's what's important to the people of Massachusetts. I know out in Worcester we really care about windmills and he wanted to stick around for a few more days because guess what the Red Sox were playing couldn't come home that's how little of a priority Charlie Baker considers these seven innocent people who were tragically killed and then he has one person jump on the sword and he says oh everything's fixed now I reformed things just like he reformed DCF right just like the fact that we also exposed a drug dealing state trooper who, who somehow got on the job got on the job because her boyfriend was a lieutenant colonel right she lost her job but who cares about her who hired her we don't know we're never going to find out and no one's going to be fired for that this is a systematic pattern okay the best thing that you can do especially you new hampshire people because 2020 is coming up is remember this and vote accordingly. In Massachusetts, I don't know, kind of an uphill battle. New Hampshire is the most important swing state in the country, okay? Get out and vote and remember the, who's on that side and who's on this side. Thank you.
as one of the best news sites in the entire state and in the entire region. TurtleBoySports.com. Okay, my friends.